What do you think is a really important skill when you're in a role, or maybe you want to get into a role, that requires you to make decisions around software architecture and design? For me, there was a phase in the middle of my career that really changed my point of view. I'm going to explain what I think is a really underrated skill that I credit for how I make decisions now that gives me more context when I need to make technical decisions, including those around software architecture and design. Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. If you're new to my channel, I post videos on software architecture and design. So if you're into those topics, make sure to subscribe. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. The topic for this video was really inspired by this tweet from Roger Johansson, where he said, the most lacking skill amongst developers is how to manage a budget. You should not be allowed to make tech choices before you have the basic understanding of a project's budget the cost of fiddling around with tech, or bringing a new database because you read a blog post about it. What this tweet reminded me of is a phase in my career where I was responsible for creating quotes, proposals, estimates, as well as if we actually got the work to see the project through, some project management, but actually understanding the idea of budgets, costs, and revenue. And I think Roger and I are on the exact same page because his reply to me was exactly how I feel, which is once you own the budget, and spend someone else's money, things get a lot more real. Huge impact on how I reason about software in general. I couldn't agree more. So I wanna give an example of this, of how thinking about money really does impact decisions. Now again, context is king. Your situation, the organization, the size of the organization that you're in, all this is gonna be affected by kind of how you think about this. So let's say that you're an independent contractor and you provided a quote to a customer to do perform some deliverable, some type of task that for X amount of dollars. How did you get to X? Well, likely, if you're doing some type of typical uh, hourly rate type assumption, you're saying, okay, well, I got 40 hours, that this is my rate, this is probably what I think is actually gonna cost. So that's what you go with. But what happens if it takes you two, two weeks or three weeks? Obviously, there's a lot of variables with software and scope creep, I'm not talking all that. I just wanna talk about the basics of, you have X that you wanna charge the customer to deliver Y. You had some length of time you thought that was actually gonna take. What happens if you go over it or under it? Now I'm a firm, firm believer in the ideas, of things like Parkinson's law. As the example, a four hour task will take a week if you've allotted a week to complete the task. I feel like this is always the case. I've seen it over and over the, again where things can get more complex because you realize you have more time, but the reverse can also be true where work contracts to fit the time we give it. So for example, if you have a four hour task, but you only really have two hours, you'll make it happen. So why does thinking about time, money, budgets, et cetera, like Roger mentioned, affect my decision-making? It does because I'm thinking about value. I'm thinking about ROI when I'm making decisions. Not everything really is about the kind of these technical things that are seemingly really awesome for us developers to tinker with and do these things, but they just don't have value. There's a lot of time spent bike shedding when it really just has no value. So that really is the key part for me is making decisions where there's things that provide value. We know they're gonna be valuable, maybe directly to the end users, through the functionality, maybe it's reduced bugs, maybe it's performance, but things that we can tangibly measure in some way to realize that there's value there. And cost also plays a factor. If you're gonna make some type of technical change or decision around, say the example Roger gave of changing a database because you read it in a blog post, maybe not that, but maybe you do change the database for performance reasons, or again, cost considerations on how much it's costing you now versus a long span of say five years out of the cost savings of moving to something else. Now I also need to bring up technical debt. Now I'm not talking about in the sense of like what most people kind of equate it to, just like this crappy code, we did stuff really bad there. No, technical debt is an explicit choice. You're making a decision to incur some debt that you will likely need to pay off in the future to have any sustainability. A way to think about this is when you're starting a project, a feature, product, whatever the case may be, you're often making a decision in incurring debt for the now so that you have a future. This is really applicable in startups where you're making decisions, not gold plating things. You wanna progress, you wanna get to market. You're not making things perfect in terms of a code sense, but you're making things good enough for now so that you actually have a future. 
If you don't have any concept of cost or any concept of value, how are you gonna make a decision around technical debt? Likely, you'll end up bike shedding in a lot of circumstances, or in the case of Parkinson's Law, you'll probably have some task that's taken so long and you'll just fill that, making things either more complex just to fill that time. If you do understand the value, if you do understand the cost, then you can be making decisions about when you want to incur technical debt, as well as when you want to pay back that debt. So I'm not sure if this is really an underrated skill, but just the idea of being aware of value, being aware of costs, budgets, etc., really impacts your decisions, especially around software architecture and design. I realize this is a little bit different of a video, but I thought it was important because I, I do feel like it really has impacted me in my career. So if you enjoyed this type of video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want to chat with other software developers about software architecture design and topics like this, make sure to join my channel and you get access to a private Discord server. Check the link in the description on how to join. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.